My name is Gaurav Manik. I'm one of the academics within the School of Architecture, Computing and Engineering, and it's great to have people joining us for this session. Um, so today's session will be looking at the various UEL platforms, and I think uh, it's quite good if um, you have uh, people who are joining UEL. So sometimes what would happen is people, you know, lecturers like myself will refer to systems and you don't know what the systems are. So uh, there's a bit of myth busting. So hopefully you know what acronyms are. You will know the difference between UEL, Moodle, Teams and our other uh, systems. And uh, so hope, yeah, so as I said, this will be a walk through the different platforms that we use at UEL and I hope you find it useful. So there'll be quite a lot of screen sharing going on. So apologies for any disruption uh, due to that. I'll try to make it as smooth as possible. Um, so without any further ado, so let me get into the slide deck. Right, so as I said, the meeting is uh, today's session is about talking through the various UEL platforms for learning, teaching and communicating. So a little bit about myself. My name is Gaurav Malik. I'm the course leader for uh, you know, the cloud for the MSc Digital and Technology Solutions program. I'm also module leader on the MSc Computing program. Um, I'm an AWS Cloud Ambassador, uh, you know, one of those rare breed around the world. Uh, my research interests include uh, computer science education, uh, smart cities and cloud computing. So as I'll be as I talk you through the various uh, you know, uh, platforms, I've also tried to include some pictures of the campus as well. For those of you unable to join us uh, uh, in the real world yet, uh, we look forward to seeing you soon in person. So this is how you get to the UEL campus using the Docklands Light Railway. So we are based at the Cypress DLR. So that's the train station, not the country, right? So just to <laughs> make a point there, uh, but the weather is sunny over here, just like the country itself. One of the things as a student of ACE you'll be able to benefit from are all the different partnerships that we have with our professional bodies. So whether it be with AWS Educate, Cisco, CompTIA, EC Council, Microsoft, VMware, SaaS. So through these partnerships, we're able to bring you all the offerings that these partners have into the course that will be starting with us. So this is a view of our campus. So these are the buildings where some of you might be living of our student accommodation. Um, so this is looking at it, uh, you know, from just over a bridge which connects us to the other side of the dock. So as you can see, wonderful sunny weather. So these are just a snapshot of the various platforms that we use. And again, I'll try and take you through those, right? So, you know, very often the lecturers will make reference to things like Panapto, Teams, LinkedIn, Moodle. So I think it's just good for you to understand what these are and what purposes they serve. This is a picture from one of our computer science labs. Right, so I've tried to break the platforms down into different categories. So I would call one of them group to be administration. So this is how you look after and you ensure that all your information is correct. So very often lecturers will say to you, can you go to UEL direct, right? So, it's, you know, so that's what we do with the administration. And then we have something called CellCat, which is our timetabling platform. And again, I'll go through each one of these and I'll at the end of the session, I'll also take you through a live demo as well. For communication, we use uh, email and Microsoft Teams. For learning, we use something called Moodle and LinkedIn Learning.
again, a picture of uh, a plane taking off from uh, London City Airport, which just happens to be on the opposite side of the dock as you're standing on a campus. So UEL Direct is where you would go to try and look at your student information. So it's very important that you make a note of it. And again, I will show you the links you can use and you can see this in the slide deck as well. So UEL Direct is where you'll go to try and ensure that you're registered on the program, you're registered on the modules that you're studying, and all your personal information is correct as well. Because very often we'll try to communicate with you uh, you know, after you graduate, we need to make sure that we have your home address correct, we have your personal details are correct, and also any sort of emergency information as well. So it's quite important that we have all of that information which is accurate and up to date. So please make it a point to go to UEL Direct to try and ensure everything is correct. And the reason for that is quite simple, is that if you're not registered on the correct mod program, let's start at a, at a course level. So let's say you're not registered on the course correctly. It means that you will not be registered on the modules correctly. If you're not registered on the modules correctly, you'll not have access to all the other systems as well. So once again, it's very important that you go to UEL Direct and you ensure that your information over there is correct and accurate. CellCat is our timetabling system. So CellCat is where you're able to go and have a look at the timetable. And for students, you know, you, if you type in your own information, you see your personal timetable appearing. Again, it's important that you attend the sessions that you've been allocated to. That's both from a resourcing point of view and also from an attendance point of view. So once again, if you're not registered on the correct modules, CellCat will not show up the correct information and I'll show you how you can ensure that you registered on the correct uh, uh, modules. I'll, I'll take an example of one student. Uh, this is an image of our campus uh, in Stratford. So this is, you know, a picture of the inside of the building over there. Email, right? So we use Office 365. And I'm sure by now, if you've all been enrolled, you have a UEL account by which you're able to correspond. It's very important you always communicate using your UEL email address. If you communicate with your Gmail, Yahoo, Microsoft, Outlook, you know, any other account which is not your UEL account, we will ignore that email because we don't know who's writing from that account. Again, it's a responsibility to ensure that your UEL account is kept safe and secure and nobody else has access to it. When using email, some email courtesy, try to ensure that you're carrying on an email conversation. So sometimes it can get quite frustrating if we start a conversation and each email starts off with a blank uh, message. So again, we do not know what the context of that email conversation is. And this is no different to how you'd be conversing to, with somebody else using email. So two things to take away from here. Always communicate using your UEL email address. Any other email will be disregarded. And try to carry on the thread of the, of the conversation. When you do go to office.com, as we've signed up to Office 365 as an institution, you're able to download Word, Excel, PowerPoint onto five different machines. So that will make you very popular with your family members. And, uh, you know, so you're able to install it on five different machines, including uh, mobile devices. So there's no excuse for you not to write your coursework in Word, do your spreadsheets in Excel. Again, we're making the software available to you. So please go to office.com and you use your UEL credentials to log in and you're able to access the system. Uh, this is a picture of one of our engineering labs, right? Just uh, a couple of guys working on a drawing and the 
building that you're seeing over there was called the Millennium Dome, right? And now it's called the O2 Arena, right? So that's uh, interesting. Microsoft Teams, so as you move to um, dual delivery style of teaching, we use Microsoft Teams also for delivering our lectures live. So many of you are attending this session using Microsoft Live. And what will happen is either you will have the recording available on Microsoft Teams or your labs will be conducted using Microsoft Teams. And again, as you can see over here with Microsoft Teams, you're able to converse, you're able to talk to your tutors and your module leaders in quite an easy manner. So my advice to you between choosing UEL, uh, between choosing email and Teams, if you have any conversation which is around your program, I would advise you to use email. Anything which is around your module, you should be using Teams to have that conversation. And the conversation for Teams will be to do with the tutorial session that you're attending. So this is how Microsoft Teams was set up for a module that I taught uh, in the last academic year, right? So during the lecture time, the lecture was delivered live on Microsoft Teams. And as you can see, we had quite a large number of students. So we had around 19 different private channels, which is how the labs were conducted. So for many of you who are attending the labs online, you will be joining the channel and you'll be conducting the labs and within the channel where you can reach out to the module team. Once again, a lot of this will depend on how the module leader has set up their teams and how they want to deliver it. Right, so this is just an example of how I did it for my module, which I ran last uh, in the last academic year. Again, a picture of um, the inside of one of our labs. Um, moving on between platforms. So very often uh, we'll say go to Moodle, right? So Moodle is our virtual learning environment, a learning management system. Again, you'll use, we use these words interchangeably. And this is where you will find all your lecture slides and content. Now, Moodle and Teams have a closer relationship than Teams and email. So for every Moodle site for your module, so every module will have a Moodle site. From that Moodle site, you can go to Teams, where you can attend the lecture, carry on the labs. And from the Teams site, you can go back to Moodle, right? So Moodle and Teams have a very close relationship. So when you're looking at your registrations, ensure that you have access to both the Moodle site and the accompanying Teams site, because Teams is where you'll be carrying on that conversation between you and the module leader. So it's important that you have access to both. If you don't have access to it, reach out to your module leader will be able to help you. So this again is an example of a Moodle site that I'm getting ready for teaching for this academic year. So you can see that uh, you know in this particular one there are different sections talking about uh, welcome and module preparation, assessment and feedback, module news and the various topics. Once again, the layout of the Moodle site will differ between the different module leaders. However, the general principles in the section should be very similar. So once again, Moodle is where you'll find your lecture slides, the PowerPoints, where you will go to hand in your coursework. And Teams is how we'll be communicating with you for that particular module. Right, so it's a bit of a mouthful. So let's try and get this right. So every module will have a Moodle site 
and a Teams site. So you go to Moodle to access the learning materials and you go to Teams to attend the live lectures or the recorded lectures and also the lab session that will be taking place over there. So again, a uh, lab being carried out in uh, one of our uh, labs, the computer science labs. Then we have our library and learning services. So as a UEL student, you have access to our labs, which, uh, sorry, our library, which are both at Docklands and at uh, Stratford. And what you will find in the library, there are a lot of resources available. Uh, so these are a few of the civil engineers carrying out some surveying task in the green, which is opposite the library. One of the things at UEL, in addition to all the different uh, resources that you have, you also have a lot of external resources which you're able to talk, tap into as a UEL student. And I think one of the best ones for me is LinkedIn Learning. Now through LinkedIn Learning, you're able to access uh, about thousands of courses which could be around your subject area or it could be something that uh, you know you may find of interest and again this is available to you for free as a UEL student normally the recommended retail price of LinkedIn learning is something like I think 30 odd pounds a, a month which is quite expensive now in some courses, so for example, I teach a mobile application development module. I use the LinkedIn uh, learning resources. I have links from my Moodle site to LinkedIn learning. In other cases, people might ask you to carry out a LinkedIn learning course in your own. But irrespective of whether it's being used in your module or not, I would highly encourage you all to really make use of this resource. And it's one of those resources at UEL which uh, is branded use it or lose it. So if we as computing, engineering, architect students do not use these resources, uh, you know, UEL will think twice about paying a substantial amount of money, you know, to keep the subscription. So I would ask you all to once again, do use this service. And what you will find in LinkedIn Learning when I log into the platform is not just technical uh, modules, you'll also find a lot of soft skill modules as well from presentation, uh, you know, uh, management and other things. So please tap into the resources for your benefit. So this is uh, for most of our engineers and computer scientists. Your labs are in a building called the Knowledge Dock, where you are, you know, where our labs are situated. And you can see in the top left hand corner, a bridge and the bridge connects the knowledge dock to the uh, library. And just give you an idea of uh, geography over there, the layout. The other thing that we have signed up for at UEL is something called AWS Educate. And as I mentioned to you before, I'm an AWS Educate ambassador, right? Uh, so we've been part of AWS Educate for quite a, quite a few many years. But last year we really, you know, put a pocket under that and we really launched it uh, across the entire university, so not just for computing students. So every student now has free access to cloud computing skills through AWS Educate, which I think is amazing. Um, this is an image of a library, which you can see, uh, you know, uh, you can see the dock from there, and it's really lovely on a, well, it doesn't really matter whether it's raining or not, because you're nice and dry inside. Um, also, for many of you, when you're looking for industrial placements, we have loads of academics helping you as you know through their own network to try and find new jobs. We have an employment engagement team, a mentoring team, career coaching, academic tutoring. So a lot of people are there to help you for those of you who are on a placement program. And this is the last couple of slides. So this is an image of our Stratford campus. Uh, where next? Well, so you need to go to UEL Track My Future for those of you who are still enrolling and again will tell you what to do. And uh, the one stop shop for all students will be uel.ac.uk slash students. Now, what I'll do is I'll just uh, stop sharing this screen and I'll take you on a live tour of the different uh, 
facilities. So let's do that now. It's quite a few different tabs open. Right, so if you can see my screen, so office.com is how you will access information. Right, this is what you will get when you get to UEL, uh, Track My Future. You'll have different things happening over here. As a student, so this is your single login, right, where you click on uh, uel.ac.uk. So as students, again, you have different links over here. You click on your, uh, you know, your login screen here. Right, so that is again, you're able to access all the different resources. I'm not going to do that because my screen will look different to yours. This is an example of um, where you are direct. Again, your screen will be different to mine. And what you're able to get over here, if you take a look at the module registration, you can find the you know, what modules are registered on. And again, this is something you should be doing, uh, you know, quite soon. And uh, that's quite useful. Um, Cellcat, so this is a calendar, right? So what you should be able to find. So for example, if you're in a program, and if I type in, uh, there's a type in a module. Maybe. So, um, let's just start with the program. So computer science, science, and if I look at the computer science MSc September, Right, so you'd have your modules appearing over here with the different sessions that they're running. And again, the module leader would have shared with you how the program has been delivered. This was AWS Educate. So again, I encourage you all to take the AWS Educate challenge to try and uh, take advantage of it. And one of the things that uh, you will see is if I go into Moodle, which if you remember was our virtual learning environment. Again from Moodle, you're able to access a lot of the different resources as well, right? So for example, Teams, Outlook, and uh, you remember I mentioned LinkedIn Learning. So if I click on LinkedIn Learning over here, using UVL single sign-on, you'll come onto the LinkedIn Learning screen or not. Right, so, um, so once you've done it the first time around, you don't need to go back there. And here with LinkedIn Learning, as you can see, there's loads of courses you know you can do. Right, uh, you're only limited by the amount of time you have on your hand. So as as I said, do take this opportunity to try and do one of these courses. So quite a few things for you to occupy your time with, right? You know, the AWS Educate, you know, LinkedIn Learning, but obviously you need to bear in mind that you're also doing a course as well. Right, so I'll stop sharing that and I'll, um, bring you back to my slideshow.